Welcome to the July 31st edition of the Colorado Wins Out Post Game, a special web exclusive production here on Channel 12. Let's get a quick take on the more than 4,000 new apartments built in Denver recently, yet rent is still skyrocketing and vacancy rates are still low. Meanwhile, the housing market, which rose a record 10% from last year, offers little, little relief for people looking for homes. Pat Cahoon from Westward, do you think it's, it's only uh, a matter of time before Denver, or at least Colorado, or maybe at least Denver, begins to see some of the um, problems when you have no place to live that you can afford either rent or to buy. It seems like there's going to be some sort of problem here. Well, and maybe the problem will be solved a good way, which is the people who built these very, very expensive apartments, you know, where you get 350, room, 350 square feet for $1,200 or whatever the one is out by st st mile high, um, they will reduce the rents, which would be a good start. But the other thing we really need to do is do something with the co construction defect issue at the legislature so people can start buying homes again. What, we're being, what are being built are very expensive apartments and way too many of them and people can't buy and how many people have that much money to keep pouring into rent in Denver. So they're going out to the suburbs. I mean Aurora's rent is, ra is ris rising faster than anywhere else because that was the less expensive alternative. We're in for a couple rough years until everything averages out. Amy Oliver Cook, Executive Vice President of the Independence Institute. Um, is there something, I mean, I realize that the whole free market part of this, that, you know, the, the prices are what they are, but there seems to be another shoe that's going to drop around here. I'm, I'm no economist, but I'm, I'm still not naive enough to think, oh, everything can just be great. The economy will be fine, and no one can afford a place to live. Something's got to give. What do you think? Well, a couple of things. One is that with the new Forbes ranking, Denver being number one, this is not going to get better right, right away. Patty's right. A couple of, of tough years. But I will say this. Uh, if if we don't get a, con a construction defects bill through the legislature, I think you'll see more municipalities around Denver doing what the state legislature won't, which is addressing it at the local level. So you'll start seeing that. Listen, there are ways around things. And if the state legislature won't act, Municipalities will. They're happy to get the people that Denver won't, w can't have, that can't live here, or they're, they, they have to move somewhere else. Lakewood, Littleton, I think you'll see more of that at the local level, and Denver would be wise to do the same. Penfield Tate, attorney at Greenbridge Traurig, also a long-time state lawmaker. Not that I have some sort of uh, easy fix that a lawmaker could suddenly pass and that fixes everything, but do you think there's going to be something the legislature wants to tackle, um, whether it's revisiting the construction defects bill or something else, that will at least alleviate some of the problems that you're going to have eventually people not being able to be in the city that's doing so well? You know, it's going to require a, a combination of things, and, and I wouldn't say you're, you're not eventually going to have. You have it. We are watching the gentrification of the entire front range because people who are our working class who earn minimum wage or close to that can't afford to live in a lot of the metropolitan area now. I mean, they're being priced out of the market. <laughs> and part of that is market force because developers aren't building affordable apartments. They don't want to. They can build luxury apartments and make a lot more money. And I think the fallacy with this conversation around construction defects is the belief that if you modify the law, developers will go out out of the goodness of their heart and start building affordable housing. If they didn't before, they're not going to do it again. So any change in construction defects law has to be carefully crafted and tied to some sort of program or tied somehow to incentivizing, requiring, whatever, the development of affordable housing. Because if you just take the, the guardrails off and trust the free market, we've seen this economic real estate boom and bust cycle before. It's going to continue, and we're going to continue to push working class people further out of the core of the cities. Care to get editor with the Greater Park Hill News. Uh, John Hickenlooper as governor, and before that as mayor of Denver, did a, has done a great job, I think, of being kind of the, the businessman's businessman. He, he's out there getting business for Denver, getting business for Colorado, magnifying all of that. I think that's why he got so, so much Republican support, at least the first time around. Is it now time to protect the economy so that people can still live here so that we don't have kind of that boomer bust problem where suddenly the rents plummet because uh, no one is around to uh, to live here well yes <laughs> <laughs> in, in a word um, you know when you consider that rents have have gone in, in the Denver metro area up in the last year 13.2 percent I think is the increase one of the largest if not the largest in the country 
I think the average apartment rent now is, you know, one thousand two hundred and sixty-five dollars a month, and that is so out of range for most working class people. And working class, we're talking the traditional middle class, teachers, firefighters, um, police um, officers, um, most people. And I think at that twelve sixty-five a month range, you're looking at needing to pull in, you know, fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year and that's without a family. So I think that yes, we absolutely have to um, look to our local elected leaders, both at the state and at the city and municipal uh, levels, um, to help correct that um, because it's clearly a, a huge problem. That is all the time we have for Colorado Insight Post postgame this week. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. For everyone here at CPT12.org, I'm Dominic Dizzuti. Thanks for watching.